challenges, in our opinion, seem to have overwhelmed our security institutions. The governors are supposed to be the state security officers of their state. There is need for us to at least engage the traditional workers. We need to do something about our porous borders. We have to run it from the unit level to the world level to the local government to stay. Mr. President, the importance of today for us is for us to take action. Those in favor say aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have been. Under the new bill, the functions of the Bureau and Tribunal shall be. Senate amends Code of Conduct Bureau Act to discourage abuse of power and ensure high moral standard. Commerce continue to support all our security, military, paramilitary agencies. And Senate President makes case for more support to paramilitary agencies, says they are part of Nigeria's security architecture. Hello and compliments of the season. Finance matters dominated plenary last week with the Senate deferring passage of 2023 Appropriation Act to Wednesday the 28th of December 2022. We also have a report on the presentation of the Finance Act by President Buhari alongside other requests to address the 2023 budget deficit. The Senate also considered bills at second and third readings. These alongside other reports form our package this week. Stay tuned for the details after the break. I am Husayna Abin Aboki. Don't go away. The Senate to send a message to the President to reap opportunities from that to raise a matter of urgent public importance. And we are aware that when this particular motion comes up for a longer term development, arise to scorn the motion. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Welcome back. The planned consideration of the report of the Senate Committee on Appropriation and subsequent passage of the 2023 Appropriation Act on Thursday, the 22nd of December 2022 was not possible due to some exigencies. Rising from a closed-door session on that day, Senate President Ahmed Lawan gave the reasons. It's because the appropriation bill came to the National Assembly with some problems and when our committees on appropriation in the Senate and House started to reconcile the figures of what we have done and what was presented, the problems became very obvious and they were not easy. To deal with. As a result, he added, the committee secretariat could not complete the task of processing the budget, particularly in this period of the Christmas festivities. Consequently, we can only receive the report and consider on Wednesday the 28th. Accordingly, the consideration of the Appropriation Act alongside other financial matters were deferred to Wednesday the 28th of December 2022. Before this, the Senate President had earlier on Tuesday the 20th of December 2022 read a letter from President Muhammadu Buhari presenting the finance bill to the Senate for consideration and passage to support the fiscal implementation of the 2023 budget. This bill's provisions are a enhanced tax equity by bringing more economic sectors into the tax net and ensuring a fairer distribution of revenue receipts to all tiers of government. You are sincerely, Muhammad Ubahari. Meanwhile, the Ways and Means Advances is a funding option by the CBN to the federal government to cater for short-term or emergency finance to fund delayed government expected cash receipt or fiscal deficits. 
In this regard, President Buhari in another letter on Wednesday the 21st of December 2022 informed the Senate that the Ways and Means Advances Balance as at 19th December 2022, which stood at 22.719 trillion Naira, was attached to the letter as an extra one. While a detailed breakdown of 1 trillion Naira to be advanced by the CBN was also attached as an extra two, totaling 23.719 trillion Naira. The letter was prepared to the Joint Committees on Appropriation, Finance, Water Resources, Works and Agriculture to report back soonest. In another letter, same day, the President presented a supplementary budget of 819.536 billion Naira as capital expenditure to address the effects of some ecological challenges like flooding on farmlands and road infrastructure during the last rainy season, exposing Nigeria to food insecurity. The President in the letter added that when approved, the supplementary budget would be financed through borrowing, thereby raising the 2022 budget deficit by 8.17 billion Naira. I have therefore approved a supplementary 2022 appropriation of 819 billion 536 million 937 thousand 813 Naira, all of which are capital expenditure. The supplementary will be financed through additional domestic borrowings. This will raise the budget deficit for 2022 to 8.17 trillion Naira and deficit to GDP ratio to 4.43%. Let's take a break to open the Senate notebook. Don't go away. Order paper is a legislative document containing the planned activities of the legislative chamber. Some of the items contained in it are prayers, approval of votes and proceedings, oaths, announcement if any, and petitions. Others are motions, bills at different stages of consideration, reports as well as planned committee meetings. When planned, the other papers are distributed to the senators as well as other stakeholders, including the public. Welcome back. Senator Uche Okunife on Tuesday the 20th of December 2022 came under matters of urgent public importance to draw Senate's attention to the plight of some staff members of Inamdi Azikiwe University who have not been paid their emoluments since employment in 2020. Since the recruitment exercise of 2020, the recruited staff have not been properly captured and have not been paid since two years they've been working in the university. We have similar problems, not only in UNISIC, we have it in the University of Calabar, in Amadubelo University, and also University, Federal University of uh, Umbudike. For the past two, three years, they have not collected their salary. Accordingly, it was resolved to direct the Accountant General of the Federation to ensure that the newly recruited staff of NMD Azikwe University are captured in the 2023 budget to enable them access their salaries and emoluments. Same day, the Senate was also presented with a petition from 17 constituents of Michika local government area of Adamawa State on illegal taxation against members of the Nigerian army. It was presented by Senator Elisha Abu, who disclosed that the situation has placed the people under one form of fear or another. From the fear of Boko Haram has now become to the fear of the Nigerian army. In this petition here, they allege that the people of Michka are paying the Nigerian army a tax of 2,000 Naira per bag of cement before it has been sold in Michka. And a zinc has been taxed 3,000 Naira per bundle of zinc in Michka. Motorcycles has been registered 5,000 Naira per motorcycle being registered before it is being used. 
After confirming that the petition is not before any court, it was referred to the Committee on Public Petitions to report back in four weeks. Several bills were also presented for second reading on Tuesday the 20th of December 2022. Let's take this report on them as compiled and presented from our studio. Six to ensure one of them, which is an executive bill, was the Code of Conduct Bureau and Tribunal Act 2004 Repeal and Reenactment Act 2022, sponsored by Senator Ibrahim Gubil. He spoke on the entitlement of the bill. Under the new bill, the functions of the Bureau and Tribunal shall be to maintain a higher standard of morality in the Code of Government, business, and to ensure that the actions and behavior of public officers conform to the highest standards of public morality and accountability. Promote transparency and accountability in public service. Ensure prudence and judicious application of state resources for national development. When we have the public hearing, we want this agency to what? To be under statutory transfer, like EFCC and ICPC, because it is only there that they will be able to, in the actual fact, be able to deliver on their mandate. The bill scaled second reading and referred to the Committee of Ethics and Public Petitions to report back in two weeks. Next to be considered for second reading was the Federal Orthopedic Hospital Ukbo, a number of state establishment bill 2022 sponsored by Senator Ifan Yuba. The Federal Orthopedic Hospital Ukbo, when established, will offer comprehensive orthopedic care for joint replacements fractures, joint pain, sports injuries, arthritis, and other injuries and conditions. In addition to minimally invasive and advanced surgery procedures. Because most of orthopedic you know, accidents occur through our roads, it means any Nigerian for any part of this country may find himself around the surrounding or the area where this hospital is, you know, located and could benefit. So, Mr. President, with this, I support that we, as a Senate, support the second reading of this bill and to urge that we give it all the expeditious attention as so second. Currently, as we speak, we have only about eight federal public hospitals in the country. In the whole of southeastern region, we have, we have only one in Enugu. I therefore support that this Senate do give consideration to this bill, allow it to pass through second reading as well as we will pass it. Consequently, the bill scales second reading and referred to the Committee on Health to report back soonest. Stand part of the bill, say I. One bill also scaled third reading same day. It is the National Food Safety and Quality Bill 2022. The report of the Committee on Agriculture which worked on the bill was presented by the Vice Chairman Senator Mahmoud Bima Negi. The establishment of the National Food Safety Council and Management Committee will no doubt provide the needed manpower to meet the required needs and eliminate incidences of foodborne and related diseases throughout the country and as well provide conducive and enabling environment for graduates from institutions to compete favorably with, the, with their counterparts on technological and agricultural health issues globally. With this, the report was considered clause by Those clause in the Committee of the Whole, leading to the third reading and passage of the bill. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Meanwhile, the Senate, same Tuesday, considered and approved the report of the Committee on Niger Delta on screening of Loretta Onoche and 12 others as chairman and members of the governing board of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. The report for the nominees' confirmation was presented by the acting chairman of the committee which screened them, Senator B.K. Amos. He gave their observations and recommendations. Arising from the screening exercise conducted on, the, on 13 nominees present, the committee noted that the nominees possess the uh, requisite educational qualifications, vast experience, integrity, leadership qualities, and competence that will have a profound positive impact on the speedy development of the Niger Delta region. The committee therefore considered the nominees fit and proper person to serve on the governing board of the Niger Delta Development Commission. The report generated the following reactions from senators. 
I would like to begin my comments by commending the President. At least finally, 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 we have Mr. President's nominations to properly constitute the board and management of the NDDC as required by the Act. I want in that same vein to commend you, Mr. President of the Senate, and distinguished senators for the very patriotic, for the very patriotic positions that this Senate has had to take on the issue of the composition, proper composition, and ensuring the proper functioning and operations of that critical body. This report would have been very beautiful if the chairman has referred to our position in Ondo State that three senators declined to support someone. The chairman did not do justice to this report and it's very, very unfortunate. Even then, the report was considered clause by clause in the Committee of the Whole and approved. The Senate President had a word of advice for the new leadership of the Commission. Really, see NDC as a development uh, institute rather than a cash cow. People should, should, should ensure that communities that this institution is supposed to work for really benefit from its existence and the resources. In the committee room, the Senate President has advocated more support for paramilitary agencies because they are amongst the most important components of the nation's security architecture. The report is compiled and presented from our studio. I'm happy to be here. Senator Ahmed Lowell gave the advocacy at the opening of a public hearing organized by the Senate Committee on Interior on six bills affecting the agencies. We in the Senate in particular, and in the National Assembly, the legislature, feel that we must continue to support all our security, military, paramilitary agencies, especially at this time, when we need all hands to be on deck for us to deal with the security challenges that our country faces. And all the five or six bills sponsored by the Sungwe Senators are aimed at improving the capacity, the capability, the efficiency and effectiveness of these agencies. The bills affecting these paramilitary agencies are Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Act 2010, Amendment Bill 2022, Nigerian Correctional Service Academic Establishment Bill 2021, Immigration Service Act 2015 Amendment Bill 2022, Fire Service Hazard and Safeguard Bill 2022, Immigration and Prison Service Board Act 2004, Repeal and Reenactment Bill 2022, as well as Immigration and Prison Service Board Act, Repeal and Enact the Internal Affairs Service Board Bill 2022. Committee Chairman Senator Kashim Shetima spoke on the public hearing. This public hearing is intended to construct the legislative processes in order to ensure that these bills are passed without any form of complexity. I have no doubt in my mind that with the array of stakeholders here present, substantial justice will be done to these bills and in the end will be better informed on the way forward and CELIP assured to report back to the Senate with our recommendations based on what transpired during this public hearing. Some of the stakeholders took positions on the bills affecting them. Our position and uh, what we seek uh, to plead for is that there should be slight amendment that you should read like this. Thus, there shall be for the core a Commandant General who shall be appointed by the president from among the serving members of the corps on the recommendation of the board and subject to the confirmation of the Senate, who shall under the, 
under the general direction of the minister be charged with the administration of this act. The Nigerian Correctional Service concurred with the bill that says for the establishment of Nigerian Service Academy to serve as an institution for the related educational matter of fact to serve as an institution for high level manpower development with a mandate to train correctional service officers. However, the Comptroller General of the Federal Fire Service alongside his serving and retired colleagues of the Immigration Service sought more time to study their bills. I want to seek the judgment of the chairman and the member to give us time so that we can go and look at it critically and come back to the Senate. Already NIS has made observations, several in, in, in our act, about 16. So we felt it should be taken holistically. That's why I wanted to request for more time to make our submissions. We seek your kind indulgence to give us like up to the end of this month to make our submissions on the new areas so that we don't call back the public hearing. Some committee members reacted. If you have made this time to be here today, I wonder the people that we, the stakeholders we invited to appear before this uh, public hearing uh, are trying to take another time to uh, discuss the issues already in for, uh, that they have already gotten to them. I've seen some element of, you know, worry. No, just relax. Uh, I want to assure you, our chairman is on top of the game, and all of us that you've seen here, we are on the same page. We will make sure at the end of the day, the bill comes out in the best interest of the services and this country. Despite this, the committee promised to compile its findings and reports to the Senate for more legislative action. Those are reports from the Senate for the week under review. Quite a busy one if you ask me. We'll wrap up the program with our profile segment. Stay tuned for our Senator of the Week. Senator Lowelly Hassan Anka represents Amfara West Senatorial District, first under PDP before joining APC in 2021. He attended Township Primary School Anka for his first school living certificate in 1980 and Government Secondary School Anka for his Senior Secondary School Certificate in 1985. At the tertiary level, he read various courses at the Kaduna State Polytechnic area between 1995 and 1998. Abdugu Sao Polytechnic in Talata Mafara from 2000 to 2002 and Kano State Polytechnic Kano between 2008 and 2009 for his HND. He joined politics and was elected to the House of Representatives where he served first term from 2011 to 2015 and second term from 2015 to 2019. He became a senator under PDP in 2020 after a court ruling on seating the then incumbent and former governor Abdulaziz Yari due to some legal technicalities. He later defected to APC in November 2021. His legislative interests include education, agriculture and security. With this, we come to the end of this week's episode of the program. It is also our last episode for the year 2022. Happy New Year in advance and do join us next week for another episode. Thanks for watching.